Okay, this is a response to Wu to the Highlander, who has tagged me in this question that's been going around the last couple of weeks or so. And he tagged me about a week ago, and I've been a bit slow in getting this done. I was going to combine this into like a monthly update, but I've had a bit of a cold, and I've just not gotten around to it, so I thought, I'll do this in one go. So, the question is five, or rather, what are five random gaming facts that no one knows or cares about and this has been changed by a few people that have tried to say non-gaming or other things but I thought I'll just keep it related to gaming because that's what the question from Wooter was so number one the first game that I ever bought I don't recall if I've mentioned this before but this is the first game I ever bought this isn't the first game I ever had this is the first one I ever paid for um, and this is my original copy, so this is Repton Infinity, which is on floppy disk, because we were posh back then and had floppy disks rather than cassettes uh, for the BBC Micro. And this isn't a great game. Uh, I really used to enjoy the Repton game, so I played Repton 1, uh, 3, I didn't like to, you got the one life on it and it was just too hard. It's I didn't like them too much, but 1 and 3 and then the, the spin-off games were really good. And then I got old enough to, you know, have some pocket money and decided to buy a game. And I I bought this and it's like a, it's like a construction kit for making Repton games. And it seems a bit slow, a bit over complex. I think if I'd have been a few years older I might have enjoyed it more because with the Repton games you can make your own graphics on them and for the level editor. And I really used to enjoy making like pseudo games um, for Repton and really wanted this and got it and just didn't enjoy it. It just felt a bit clunky. Maybe it was too ambitious. Um, yeah, I, I had a look at, you know, on the internet in years later to see what the general opinion is. And I think it's similar. I don't think that many people really got into it. It was probably just a bit too late. Okay, so question two um, is Macro. I used to get most of my games from Macro, uh, which is like a cash and carry. Um, it's still open now, but I remember going there with my parents as a kid, and there were so many games there, and they were really cheap as well. And I remember seeing Mario for the first time, uh, and that's when I got to play, I think it was... It was the Nintendo for the first time, but it was probably the first console I ever played, and I wasn't that impressed with it. Um, so I've, I've talked, um, you know, on, vi on previous videos about not being a massive Nintendo, well, NES fan. Um, I quite enjoyed Mario, but the other games didn't really appeal. But that's by the by, so yeah, Macro. I used to get most of my ST games. Um, some of the Mega Drive ones, and then I think the last generation was the Saturn. And I got my first Saturn game, which was Magic Carpet. Um, that was a really good game. Good use of the hardware, but it was really hard. And I think I traded it a few months later. Yeah, so I don't know if they still sell games now. It's a shame, really, because they had so many good 16-bit games there. Far more than a lot of game shops did. So, um, third one is, yeah, this is a memory of something I was thinking probably 1992, three-ish. And I used to think about what would happen to my Mega Drive, because I, I realised that, you know, you get a console and you're quite attached to it, but eventually more consoles would come out and it would either get sold to someone or putting that an attic or thrown away. I used to wonder what would happen to it and be a bit sad to think that it would probably end up in a scrap heap along with all the games eventually. And yeah, I'm I'm quite happy to think no, it's probably not. It's probably on a shelf that looks just like this in someone's house. So that'd be that's well encouraging to think that these things have been rescued and you know they've been looked after. Although probably mine was in a scrap heap or something. Who knows? Maybe I should put a note in it or something. Um, yeah. So following on from that, number four. Um, 
going back to buying Mega Drive um, games and Mega Drive and you know, collecting for it for the second time. Um, so I've mentioned before that I got rid of my Mega Drive around 95-ish. So I sold it with the Mega CD to a friend of mine. Um, obviously not caring too much about where it went to. Um, and bought a SNES. I was going to get 3EO but it cost too much so I got a SNES. Um, and around 98 I was getting to the point where my Saturn was getting a bit long in the tooth. There weren't that many great games coming out for it or not many games at all for the Saturn. And the Dreamcast wasn't out and I thought I really miss the Mega Drive. You'd occasionally see a Mega Drive game in a shop and I thought mmm you know a bit of nostalgia thinking I shouldn't have got rid of it. So I, I bought a second hand Mega Drive and I went into cash converters and I got those two up there, you probably can't see it, um, for a, a tenner each, so that's tenner for the Mega Drive, tenner for the Mega CD. And even though they were quite cheap, it just felt weird buying one of these older consoles at, at that point. It seemed almost like a kid's toy and it just seemed so weird going in and I remember seeing it behind the cabinet and talking to the guy in the shop and saying you know, I really would like the, the Mega Drive and Mega CD and it just felt like I was doing something wrong it was just a weird thing to do and got it and really enjoyed it and just bought most of the games in the shop um, which is why I got them you know fairly cheap and built quite a lot of the collection particularly the Mega Drive and the Mega CD games they were really cheap that at that point the shop was just getting rid of them um, I think probably a lot did get thrown away eventually because they were there you know the better games disappeared and there were some sports games and, and you know common games and they just disappeared overnight so maybe they've all gone to a landfill I don't know um, so the last one I was trying to think of another fact and sli slightly struggling is Heavy Rain um, I really like adventure games I like Fahrenheit or Indigo Prophecy as it's called in the US and I didn't get a PS3 until a couple of years ago when my DVD player packed in and I saw it as a good excuse to, so not DVD player, Blu-ray player rather, packed in, so it was a good excuse to replace it with a PS3 and play all these exclusive games. And Heavy Rain was the first on that list and I was really looking forward to playing it and I got the game, put it on, played it for quite a bit and I didn't enjoy it. It was just something about the game. I don't know what it was. I don't think it was the story that was bad. I thought it was interesting, but the, the game just didn't appeal. It just didn't keep my attention. Um, some do, some don't. And yeah, I eventually just traded it in for something else. Despite it having such a good reputation, it just didn't, didn't stick. So... Maybe I'll go back to it one day, maybe not. Right, so I'll name... I've got five people here because I can't remember and can't keep track of who has already answered these five questions. So, the list of these people are T-Rex Space Station, uh, Infected Flinch, uh, Riddle on YouTube, Games Bloke, and last but not least, Isambard Montague, because Isambard, being a real person, um, has been around for a bit. He's a you know an elderly gentleman, and he's been around for you know the games industry. And I know for a fact that he really hated the Commodore approach, Jack Trammell's approach to you know computers for the masses, not the classes. He thought they were for the classes. So I'd like to hear from him what his five untold gaming facts are. Right, I'll leave it there. So thanks for watching.